The European Union is noted being an entity in which member states' sovereignty, system of governance, and state bureaucracy continue their functions under the umbrella of a constitution based on European culture. Within this constitution's framework, member states cooperate in politics, culture, and economy. And a central legislature and administration coordinate their cooperation and represent Europe's interest as a whole. The Islamic Union must have a structure that preserves member states' independence, national borders, rights, and interests. And it must have a vision to unite these sovereign states under a shared Islamic culture and establish the legislative and administrative organs that will develop and implement common policies. The organization of the Islamic Conference has 56 member states and is the largest Muslim organization in terms of number of members and of geography. In addition, there are several regional military and trade alliances between neighboring Muslim nations, each of which fulfills important functions. However, the Islamic world needs a more comprehensive union. This union must have decision-making powers, be able to develop and implement common policies and represent the voice of the whole Muslim world. This union must function in the economic, military and social areas. Thus, the member state's security concerns will be addressed, and the resulting extensive cooperation will result in higher standards of living in the member states. An Islamic union must be peaceful and harmonious, must be a generator of solutions, must be just and respect private and individual rights must aim the development of the Islamic world, must bring the conflicts between Muslims and other civilizations to an end and resolve problems. One of the signs that an Islamic Union is a necessary and realistic project is the fact that the need for an Islamic Union has begun to be perceived by the West. The way that Western commentators look back to the Ottoman Empire is an expression of this. One of the comments from the West about this subject is a piece in the New York Times by David Fromkin entitled, A World Still Haunted by Ottoman Ghosts. Fromkin begins by saying that a ghost has been haunting the United States. It is the specter of the Ottoman Empire. And continues. Looking back, it is clear that many characteristics of the Middle East were shaped by the five centuries of Ottoman rule. British journalist Timothy Garton Ash expressed similar views in an article published in The Guardian. Ash says, We are still wrestling, nearly a century later, with the legacy of the Ottoman Empire, and concludes, Let's face it. When this bleeding war in Iraq is over, We'll be back in 1918, confronting many of the same questions in the same places that our grandparents wrestled with, from the Balkans to the Middle East. And we still don't have answers. Sometimes I think we should reinvent the Ottoman Empire.
The feature of the Ottoman Empire referred to by Western observers is that it represents the last Islamic Union in history. Islamic Union collapsed together with the Ottoman Empire and various superstitious trends and problems, including radicalism, emerged from the ruins. The solution is the restoration of the Islamic Union. An Islamic Union which, as under the Ottoman Empire, will be tolerant of other beliefs, a respected and dazzling member of the community of civilizations, and a guarantor of world stability. Modern Turkey, the heir of the Ottoman Empire, with the democratic system it possesses, its moderate conception of Islam based on Quranic moral values, its dialogue with the West, and the prestige it enjoys in the Islamic world, is capable of leading that union. It is most interesting that this fact is being identified by Western commentators. The British writer Jonathan Power makes the following comment in an article in the Los Angeles Times titled, The Stage is Set for an Islamic Renaissance. This renaissance of Islam will come to pass in one not too distant day, if only because the roots of civilization in the Islamic world run deep. The brain power is certainly there. It is just a question of the right political structures. In the modern world, perhaps democracy can be the key to unlock the stored-up potential, as modern Turkey seems to be demonstrating. Recent developments clearly show that the Islamic world is ripe for great and fundamental change. The Quran and the Hadith literature suggest that the approaching period will be a bright one for the world's Muslims, God willing. Setting up the Islamic Union will speed up the process and begin a new era of plenty and prosperity not only for Muslims, but also for humanity in general. The current situation may seem to be very negative at first look, whereas in reality, each negative development signals the approach of a blessed period. War, destitution, famine, oppression, and tyranny against Muslims across the world are signs of the end times. The end of the end times is the rise of Islamic moral values. Therefore, the current situation must not cause Muslims to feel despair and hopelessness. On the contrary, it should motivate them and increase their zeal and excitement. The great Islamic scholar, Bedou Zaman Said Nursi, explained in his famous Damascus sermon the conditions in which Muslims live warned of the dangers of falling into despair and spoke of the bright future awaiting them as follows. Despair is the most detrimental sickness. It has permeated into the heart of the Islamic world. Such a despair that it has stifled our sublime morality, swerving our attention from the interests of the general to our personal interest. It is the very same despair that has broken our spiritual might. Despair is the most dreadful sickness of our people. It is the pretext of the coward, the inferior, and the helpless. It is only Islam which will truly and spiritually pervade the continents of the future and lead humanity to bliss both in this world and the next. The glad tidings imparted by Bedoui Zaman are today very near. In order for Muslims to be worthy of these tidings, they must never forget that union is something commanded by God. Hold fast to the rope of God altogether, and do not separate. <laughs>